Greetings to you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This evening, I'm going to be answering a question which has been proposed to me. Do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? Do the saints come back? Do they return with Jesus for the millennium? One of my viewers, Ivor, who is a respected elder from one of the churches I preach at from occasionally from time to time, has posed this question for me. So with due respect, I'm going to answer him and lay that down so that you can see how you can understand with regards to the saints. Do the saints come back? So there's no differentiation with regards to is it Old Testament saints, New Testament saints? And do they come back with Jesus? So this would be for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for the millennium. So let's first iron out the chronological chart. So what we know is if that's the cross, then essentially we've got Old Testament here, New Testament. And what the proposition is, the millennium. So the millennium happens after the church is raptured, because we believe in that pre-tribulation rapture. After the church, in this age of grace, climaxes, also known as a church age to some, and body of Christ. Once the body of Christ is removed in the rapture, which precedes the tribulation, seven years, true. Then we have the thousand years, millennium. So the question is, do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? So this is the millennium, this period here. So to get to the millennium, you need to have the rapture first, and then the seven years tribulation. Now, Jude 4 does say, Jude 14, does mention that, Behold, the Lord shall return with 10,000 of His saints. But who are those saints? Remember, Jude, the New Testament, hadn't been written yet. So who are those saints that Jude is alluding to? And then furthermore, if you look at Revelation, Chapter 19, verse 14. It speaks about the armies of the Lord that shall return with Jesus Christ. So there's two references there. Now some theologians will tell you that this is the church as the body of Christ this is returning for the millennial period. But the millennial period is not for us, the body of Christ. I've mentioned to you before that if we call that line in the book of Acts, you'll notice Genesis 2 Acts is essentially time past. Time past. And Ephesians 2 mentions this. And I've done a teaching on this about two, three weeks back. So everything from Genesis to Acts is time past. Essentially from Exodus 20 right up to Acts, it focuses on the law and on Israel. But God is now working with this age of grace period, this church age, the body of Christ. And the books that pertain to this period are from Romans to Philemon. And this is the but now period. So you have time past, and now this is but now, as taken from Ephesians chapter 2. So time past is verse 11, this is but now, it's verse 13. And then it speaks about ages to come. So everything that is from after the, tri after the rapture to the end. Is ages to come. Ages to come. And this is Ephesians chapter 2. And this is found in verse 7. So you need to break your Bible up into three components. Time past, the books that have historically already have taken place. Those that we are in now. And then those to come. So what you'll notice immediately. That the millennium falls in the ages to come period. And not for us. Not for the body of Christ. This is dealing with Israel, now he's dealing with the body of Christ, and here again, he's dealing with Israel. Now, I get a Bible teaching, my Bible teaching number 136. In my teaching of 136, I showed there that the four Gospels, which precede the cross, the four Gospels, so essentially, they're still dealing with the Old Testament and with Israel. The four Gospels are basically looking forward and speaking about the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Then you've got Revelation. You've got Revelation. You've got four chapters in Revelation. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 14. And Revelation chapter 19. Those four chapters in Revelation deal with the visions of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as the four Gospels are four accounts of the first coming, so Revelation are four accounts of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's very important to understand that Revelation, up to the end of Revelation chapter 20, is dealing with ages to come pertaining to Israel. Then what you have in this period here, you've got a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem. And this is essentially Revelation chapter 21 and 22. So, we are in this period. We get raptured to go be with the Lord. We are the body of Christ to go be with the Lord. And then the Lord deals with Israel. He has a twofold purpose. I mentioned before about in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. He's got a heavenly purpose and an earthly purpose. Lucifer contaminated the heavens. We go there to the heaven. And Adam contaminated the earth. The earth is for Israel. So what you'll notice that these saints that are coming back, the first thing you'll notice is that it's the second coming. Now the second coming is not for the body of Christ. The second coming has got to do with Israel. You'll also notice that they are coming to earth. We don't come to earth. There's three chapters I can give you, for instance, if you look at um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. It says to us that we are seated in heavenly places. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 2, it says to us, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So the body of Christ is to set the affection on things above, not on the earth. And in Philippians 3.20, it says, let your conversation be in heaven. 3.20. So when it comes to the body of Christ, the affection... Their conversation, their position is in the heavens. Our, we are seated in heavens. That's where we're going to be. We're going to be inhabiting the new heavens. The Jews, Israel, are going to be inhabiting the new Jerusalem. And the nations are going to be inhabiting the new earth. So if you look at the, the millennium, you get Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23. And it says there that, Ten Gentiles of the nations will hold the hem of the garment of one Jew. And they'll say to the one Jew, we know God is with you and we're going to follow you. It's much like Ruth and Naomi. Where Ruth said to Naomi, let your God be my God. In Ruth 1 verse 16. And uh, so she, she follows Naomi to Bethlehem. So to here, the Gentiles, they come and they follow the Jew. But this is in the millennium because the Jew here in Zechariah 23 has the new covenant which is written on his heart. The new covenant for Israel and for Judah is written on their heart. So it pertains to Israel, the covenants and the feasts, etc. So do the saints. Now the Old Testament saints, it tells us for instance in Matthew chapter 8 verse 11. It says, and many shall come from the east and the west. And they shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. This prayer is also called the kingdom of heaven. So yet it's evident. You've got Old Testament saints such as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sitting down in the millennium. Do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? So the saints that come back are the Old Testament saints. Jude 14 speaks about it. Revelation 19 echoes it. And they are the ones that come back for the millennium, the Jews, Israel, they come, the Old Testament saints, because the Old Testament saints are not part of the body of Christ. The body of Christ began essentially with Paul post Acts chapter 9, because to get into the body of Christ, you need to believe the gospel. So Peter, for instance, is not in the body of Christ. Peter is in the kingdom program. He is with the other 11 apostles, Matthias and the other apostles, they did not receive the grace gospel. They are with the gospel of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it was essentially what Peter preached on Acts chapter 2 verse 38, which was be baptized 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that is the gospel message they have. They don't have the gospel message of 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4 which is believing in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and confessing. They had to have a works gospel. That's why they had baptism included in their gospel. Um, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I mentioned yesterday's teaching when you get to Acts 18, Acts 19 they were baptized but they hadn't received the gift with those 12 disciples that were in Ephesus in Acts 19 for instance. So the body of Christ goes to the heavens. Now in the fullness of time the body of Christ essentially inhabits as I mentioned the new heavens. Israel inhabits the new Jerusalem and the, the nations inhabit the new earth. Now at this point in time, I don't know what is all in store for the believers in the body of Christ. It may be then that we will be able to um, correspond with the Israel in the new Jerusalem and go to the new Jerusalem and go to the new earth, etc, etc. As the angels had that um, opportunity in this period of time, uh, some have entertained angels unawares, Hebrews chapter 13 tells us, it may be that we will have that ability to do that based on what we do here um, with regards to the kingdom of God. So I hope this answers your question. Do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? Well, the question is a yes and a no answer. The yes would be the Old Testament saints come back. That we know. Do the New Testament saints come back? In other words, those in the body of Christ, those that are in this saved in the spirit of grace, in this church age in which some have called it, not to get confused with the churches that are called in Revelation. Those churches in Revelation are for Israel. They're not for us. Um, so, do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? I think the answer is no. We don't come back for the millennium because the millennium God is still dealing with Israel. He's not. He's 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 removed us. We've gone up. Satan even comes down. It, it must be mentioned that Satan comes down during this tribulation period at the halfway mark. He uh, is bound in the bottomless pit during this millennium period. And at the end of the millennium, at the end of every dispensation, it ends in apostasy. So at the end of the Lord. In apostasy, the end of grace ends in apostasy, end of tribulation ends in apostasy, end of the thousand year millennium it ends in apostasy, believe it or not. Even with Christ on the throne fulfilling the covenant of David, it ends in apostasy. So we're not in this period of time, so we're not um, experiencing this, this, this apostasy. Our period is now, and uh, once we get saved and once we get removed out of here, uh, either the dead in Christ rise first or we which were alive in the main part caught up. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't go through the tribulation and we don't, we're not affected by that apostate period there when God and God come against Israel. So I'm hoping that this is a blessing to you. The only other thing I want to just mention is that this period of time here, if you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1, it says, but of the seasons, of the times and the seasons, I need not write it to you. This is the only period of time that is not constrained and confined to times and seasons. So with the law, it was the Sabbath, it was the monthly new moons, it was the feasts, um, and it was everything that encompassed. With Israel, it's everything that is visible, that can be seen, can be visible. Okay, um, But with us, there are no times, dates, seasons, feasts, sabbaths, holy days for us. Um, we are a mysterious beginning and we have a mysterious end. And in between, we, there, is, there is no set time, if you, can, if you can understand that. So we live in this parenthesis period when the age of prophecy is on hold. And after we are removed, then God starts dealing with the Jews again. The prophetic calendar begins again and... It's uh, essentially the, the last Old Testament week, which is the week of tribulation. That's the, the week, the, the last Old Testament week that needs to be fulfilled, taken from Daniel chapter 9. Um, so 
I pray that this was able to answer your question. Do the saints come back with Jesus for the millennium? Well, I think the Old Testament saints do, uh, according to Jude chapter 14. But we ourselves, we don't come back. Our place is in the heavens. Our conversation is in the heavens. Our affection is in heaven. We sit in heaven. We positioned in the heavens. And I pray that this was a blessing and I hope that this has answered your question. Thank you, Ivor. God bless you. Amen.